Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U online instruction. All right, welcome back. Uh, this lecture is about uh, counting uh, uh, counting quantum states for a two-dimensional uh, potential well. And uh, this topic is known in the literature as density of states or calculating the density of states for a quantum system. Um, the reason it's important is because, um, you know, is, is the, uh, the systems that you, you, you calculate become more complicated. Uh, they have more and more states available to them. Uh, the particles have more and more states available to them. And if you have to calculate every possible wave function or all possible energies uh, using Schrodinger's equation, that, that starts to become a time-limiting uh, uh, endeavor. You just, you just can't do it. You run out of time, especially when you're dealing with systems that have uh, tens or hundreds of particles. So it becomes important to have a, a, a way to approximate the number of um, uh, states available to a, a particle in a quantum system. And, and this is done by using the knowledge of the quantum system to calculate something called the density of states. It's abbreviated by the, the symbols DOS, right? So density of states, you'll see DOS everywhere. So um, the uh, virtue of density of states is once it's known, you can multiply that density of states by an energy interval delta E, and that then tells you the number of quantum states that lie within that energy range delta E. Uh, so depending on how complicated the density of states is, um, you can have very complicated uh, 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 numbers of states as a function of energy, right? The, the, the variation is, 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 is quite amazing. Uh, for the two-dimensional potential well, turns out the density of states is going to be a constant, independent of energy, so the result is, is very simple. And what we're going to do today is set up that calculation and show you how that all works out, okay? So that's, that's, the, um, that's the plan for this lecture. And the way we're going to do the calculation is we're going to rely on the, uh, the plot of allowed energy states uh, versus kx and versus ky. So this is a plot that you saw in the last lecture. Uh, remember that each dot on this plot represents an allowed state. And uh, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to devise a technique to count how many of these states there might be between, let's say, some uh, radius vector k and some other radius vector k plus delta k. So for instance, we're interested in, in estimating a number of uh, quantum states that lie in this, this region of, of space. And uh, we want to use some uh, knowledge of the system in order to do that calculation. Ultimately, what we want to do is we want to be able to plot the number of states versus k or the number of states versus energy because it's this plot that uh, turns out is going to be very useful. So uh, to do this calculation, I have to very quickly remind you of the chain rule from calculus. Chain rule says that if, if you have a function y that's a function uh, of, of a, a, a variable u, and u happens to be a, a function of another variable x, then the derivative of y with respect to x can be uh, quickly obtained by taking dy du times du dx. This is known as the chain rule in calculus. And you use it all the time, probably without even thinking about it. So for instance, you know, you ask, what's the derivative of the sine of 5x? Well, in this case, y is then equal to sine of u, and u is equal to 5x. And so the derivative of 5x with respect to x is the derivative of sine u with respect to u times the derivative of 5x with respect to x, which is just 5 times the cosine of 5x. So this is, uh, this is, this, this formalism, right? This formalism that allows you to calculate this result is going to be used in this lecture. And I just wanted to remind you of it to, um, uh, to start with. 
So um, here we're, what we'd like to do is we'd like to think our way through the, uh, the question about how many states dn uh, lie between uh, uh, a wave vector k and a wave vector k plus delta k, right? So basically, if every quantum state is represented by a dot, right, we're just going to ask how many dots lie in this, this region of space, right, which has a width delta k. And of course, you're free to choose delta k, um, uh, uh, have delta k to be any value that, that you want. So uh, what we're going to say is we're going to say that the, the number of states at energy E uh, is going to be represented uh, by this quantity G of E. Uh, you'll find different textbooks use different notations. So sometimes you'll see N of E, sometimes you'll see G of E, and um, that quantity uh, of, of how many states there are in, in, this, in this, this ring here is referred to as dn, uh, dE times the inter energy interval dE that, that uh, spans this range between k and k plus delta k. And what we like to do is we like to calculate this quantity, okay, in a, in a systematic way. So how do you do that? Well, what you, uh, what you do is you have to first uh, calculate the area that's enclosed in this shaded region. And since uh, the wave vector k and the wave vector k plus delta k uh, describe circular arcs in this two-dimensional space, right, the area enclosed in this ring is just pi times k plus delta k quantity squared minus pi k squared. And for delta k small enough, that's approximately equal to 2 pi k times delta k. Uh, furthermore, we only need one-fourth of the ring, right? So this calculates uh, the area of a, a complete circular ring. We only need one-fourth of that because kx and ky are confined to positive integers. So we have to pick up an additional factor of one-fourth, right? Uh, if we want to calculate the, the number of states in that ring, what we have to do is we have to divide the area of the ring by a quantity A0, which tells us how much area each state takes up. So each state uh, takes up an area that's given by a small square. The dimensions of the square are pi by L, and this just simply comes, comes about by counting the distance uh, in Kx and Ky between each of these, these different quantum states. So if we take if we take the area of this shaded ring and if we divide it by the area uh, required to take up one state, then we're going to find out how many states there are in that ring, and that's what we do in this equation. And what we're left with is, 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 is with this quantity that depends on d, dk, which is the length of the, uh, the width of the ring. It also depends on the length of the box L that, uh, that we're confining this particle into. So, uh, what we can then what we can then write is we can then write an expression for dn dk in terms of these known quantities. We just have to simplify the equation a little bit. And this is one uh, component that will allow us to calculate dn dE, which is this is our ult ultimate goal up here. So first we calculate dn dK. The second ste step in the calculation. Uh, uh, requires us to calculate dk dE, right? So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to say this density of states is going to be uh, by the chain rule dN dK times dK dE. We've already calculated dN dK on the previous slide. In this slide we're going to calculate dK dE. And we can do that because we've got an expression uh, for the energy E as a function of kx and ky squared, right? So if we, if we take kx squared plus ky squared and represent it as k squared, then we can solve for k as a function of e. And uh, we have this very simple relationship here that k is proportional to some constants times the square root of the energy e. And that then allows us to calculate dk dE by just simply taking the derivative. Uh, I rewrite the, uh, the answer in a, in a more tractable form, and I then use this expression for dK dE down here 
along with the expression for DNDK to calculate the number of states there are in an energy interval delta E. And uh, if you just work through the arithmetic, it's pretty straightforward algebra. What you'll find is that you'll find that for a uh, two-dimensional well of infinite height, the number of states available is equal to L squared over 2 pi, where L is the dimension of the square well. It, devo it, it requires the mass of the electron, m sub e, divided by h bar squared, and it also requires you to specify the energy interval delta E that you're interested in. So once the problem is specified, once you tell me the mass of the particle that's trapped in this well, once you tell me the dimensions of the well, all of this stuff in blue here is, is just a constant number. Uh, it's also uh, useful to write the, the, uh, the number of states per unit energy divided by the area of the, of the square well. So that just gets rid of this L squared quantity that appears up here. So the density of states per unit area uh, uh, just requires us to divide uh, L squared into this expression for G of E. And uh, we're then left with a, with a constant here uh, times the energy interval delta E that we're interested in. So the, uh, the uh, end result is we, the density of states in two dimensions is a constant. That's the, that's the final result. And I'll also mention that this calculation does not involve spin. Uh, the spin of the electron is something we'll put into the calculation in about two or three weeks. So at this point, we're treating the electron as, a, as if it has no spin. Uh, it's probably useful to uh, demonstrate how this calculation is used, and um, I, I do that in this slide. I just ask the simple question, how many states there are uh, in an inter energy interval delta E um, uh, for a two-dimensional square well? And in this case, I pick, I pick the uh, two-dimensional square well to have a dimension 10 nanometers in X, 10 nanometers in Y, I put in one electron, the uh, electron has a mass m sub e. So if I want to calculate the number of states per unit energy delta e, I just have to evaluate this, this quantity that I've indicated uh, in red here. Uh, I put in the numbers, and then uh, at the end of the day, I calculate uh, not the number of states per joule, because a joule is a huge energy uh, for a quantum system, I rather calculate the number of states per electron volt, and uh, if you, you can check my arithmetic, you'll find out that this particle here, uh, when it's put in this well, will find uh, about 208 states per electron volt of energy, independent of the energy of the, uh, the electron that, that, that's dropped in. So if this electron is dropped in at energy, let's say one electron volt, if it looks around, it's going to see about 200 uh, uh, available quantum states per EV of energy. If the uh, particle is dropped in and has an energy of 10 EV, it's still going to see the same uh, 200 uh, states or so uh, per EV of energy. And that's referred to as the density of states uh, for this two-dimensional quantum well. Uh, I end the lecture by just saying, you know, this, this calculation is very similar uh, to calculating the number of seats that, that you might find in a basketball arena. Um, uh, here we're substituting seats for states, uh, and we're just asking, you know, uh, if you have a basketball court and, and uh, you have circular uh, uh, rows of seats, it's kind of useful to ask the question how big, how many, how many seats there are available, uh, for instance, as a function of distance from center court. So this is a funny, funny basketball arena because it has no uh, aisles or, or, or terraces. It just has circular rows of seats. That just makes the uh, calculation simple. And, and I also do the calculation uh, for different angles alpha so that you know, some of these arenas have very steeply sloped seats and others are, are, uh, are a bit narrower. 
right? Um, I limit the calculation to 40 rows. That's a typical number that you find in basketball arenas. And just like when we did the calculation for the quantum states, right, we had to know something about the size of the uh, 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 the size of, in K space that each state takes up. So, well, the same thing applies here. If you want to do this calculation, you got to know the size that each seat takes up, right? So I went to a stadium and I measured the dimensions of the seats, right? And I found out that the seats tend to be about three quarters of a meter wide and the separation between rows is on the order of 1.2 meters. So once I know those numbers, that basically tells me how many seats I can fit in a row. I can then calculate the number of seats as a function of, let's say, radius from center court. So the, the, the details of the calculation aren't terribly interesting. I, I give them here if somebody really wants to, to sort it out, right? Um, but at the end of the day, I can, I can do a, a plot, and I can tell you for this, for this uh, hypothetical basketball arena, I can tell you the number of seats versus, let's say, the line of sight uh, uh, from center court uh, for different stadiums, right? Uh, I, I did three stadiums with these different angles of inclination of the seats. And, you know, you can then answer the question, you know, like, uh, if you want to go see a basketball game and you want to be as close as possible to the action, uh, which stadium uh, should you go to? Should you go to a stadium with a uh, a very narrow uh, sloped uh, seats or a stadium where the seats are very s steeply sloped. And so you can see that for a given line of sight, right, the stadium that, that is uh, flat, right, relatively flat, has more seats available uh, for a given line of sight distance to center court than a, ste than a, a stadium that has steeply sloped um, uh, seats. So, you know, this is a, a, a very simple analogy to calculating density of quantum states in a, in a system. Uh, the difference is we're interested in how many quantum states are available to particular energy um, uh, rather than the number of seats that are available for a particular line of sight from center court. But the, um, the analogy is pretty... Um, uh, pretty solid, and uh, it just indicates to you why we might be interested in the density of states calculation for, for quantum states. So um, this is going to end our discussion for the two-dimensional uh, uh, Schrodinger equation. We've run through a simple model that you can solve analytically. Uh, we've shown you some examples of wave functions and um, some examples of the energy levels that, uh, that develop uh, because of the, the finite dimensions of these boxes, uh, these, these quantum, uh, quantum boxes. Um, the next topic, uh, we're going to move into a discussion of confining an electron to a very narrow region of space in three dimensions. And this will take us into a discussion of the uh, allowed uh, electron energy states for the hydrogen atom. So the mathematics for this uh, becomes a little bit more complicated. Uh, so when you come back, uh, be ready to uh, 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 indulge in some uh, uh, complicated uh, arithmetic because uh, a lot of algebra is involved. So we'll try to walk you through that and give you an understanding of, of why the hydrogen atom is important, and we'll try to... Uh, uh, show you what Schrodinger's solution uh, uh, for the electron states in the hydrogen atom will show you how that's different from what Bohr uh, was able to uh, cook up. So we'll see you in that next lecture. Thank you very much.